Last but not least, the methods I want to look at on the list are sort and binary search. In order to do a binary search, we have to sort, so we'll examine sorting first. I have my party ages here, which is a list, a sequence of items of people, of ages of people that have come to my party. You can see that these values are definitely not in order. I can say my party ages dot for each. I showed this to you in a previous video. Console dot right line. Control F5. You can see the items are stored as I add them, which is nice. This is this is considered an order, an explicit order that I've stated, and I want these items to stay in order unless I state otherwise. But I could certainly sort them and put them in ascending order. Ascending order means from the least to the greatest. If you think when you ascend stairs, you're ascending from the smallest step up to the largest step. So I can change this around and say my party ages dot sort, which actually affects the order of the items as they're stored in the list. And now when we do our right line, you can see 10, 35, 39, a couple of 42s, 88, and 99. And that seems simple. Generally, sorting is. But if I do a control shift space here, you'll notice that there's four overloads for sort. There's one that takes no arguments. Hit the down arrow. There's one that takes a comparison of int, which is a delegate that we'll examine shortly. Hit the down arrow. There's another overload that takes I compare of int. I compare is slightly dated, but still pre pretty relevant today. Hit the down arrow. And the last overload is a redundant overload, except it's it's used if you only want to sort a subset of your list and not the entire list. So we will not examine this last overload. Instead, we'll look at the I comparer the comparison, and also the sort that takes no arguments. Now here's the magic question. I have a list of ints. How does the list know how to compare these ints? You may think, Jamie, that's easy. These these values, they're integers. I, I can see it. Well, yeah, but a computer needs to know that, okay, these are ints, and this is how you compare them. If they're floats, if you understand floating point and how floats are stored completely different, in 32 bits than a 32-bit integer is, then all of a sudden the rules for comparison change dramatically. Uh, let me see if I can illustrate this even more. Let's let's make our own custom type. I want to make a type cow. I'm into cows for whatever reason. Public string name get set. Let's do a constructor. C T O R. And actually, we don't need a constructor. We'll just do name. How about that? Cow name. And I think we're done with my party ages for a bit. Let's do list of cows. Me cows gets new list of cow. And here I'll say new cow uh, name. Oh, that's why I want to do a constructor to make this a little bit more readable. I'll just say name gets name and or namespace. Sure. Why not string name? There we go. New cow. Uh, Betsy, I always bring her along for most of my examples involving cows. And I believe another new cow. Uh, don't blink. Okay, we have some cows here. We have Betsy, Georgie, Abby, Doug, Bacon, and Beef. And let's say we want to sort these cows uh, maybe on their names. You know, cows could have weight as well. Why don't we give our cows some weight? I'll say uh, public int wait and get set and just for demonstration purposes I'll make a static random object here rand gets new random I only want one random object and I could probably make it somewhere else besides in my cow but let's do wait gets rand dot next give me a random wait from I don't know how, I have no idea how much cows weigh, maybe 500 to 1,000 pounds. I've never been stepped on one. I've been stepped on by a horse, but definitely not a cow. So each cow will have a random weight. And so now when I say me cows dot sort, what's going to happen? I could sort my cows, turn up to high definition on the video if necessary. I could sort my cows either by their names or by their weights, or maybe by their names and then their weights, or... Maybe by the weights and then by the names. Hopefully you're seeing the headache here. When I say sort, list has to know how to compare all these items to each other. In fact, if I control a 5 this, you see we get an exception. Invalid operation. Oh, man, that's just so bad. I feel so dirty when I make that window pop up. But if I... Oh, that's even worse. Oh. <laughs> 
Microsoft's trying to solve my code for me. Anyway, uh, invalid operation failed to compare two elements in the array. Argument exception, at least one object must implement I comparable. Go figure. I comparable is an interface that objects must implement in order for sorting algorithms to be able to sort the elements. It's up to me as the creator of the cow class. It's up to me to determine how these cows are compared. So I'll implement I comparable. There's a non generic and generic version, as you saw in my previous videos. That's totally de 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 delete, <laughs> totally ditch the non generic versions and just do the generic versions. I'm going to do I comparable of cow, control dot, Visual Studio, please stub out the function for me. I comparable has one method in, it's compare to, and it takes another cow. So I'm going to compare this instance of a cow with this other instance of a cow and I have to return an int indicating how we compare. If I return a negative number then I am considered less than the other cow. If I return zero then I am considered equal to the other cow. If I return a positive number then I am considered greater than the other cow. That's how compare to works. So via I comparable we can in using this int we can get that three state logic. Are you less than, equal to, or are you greater than? And I just want to compare on the name so I'm going to return my name dot compare to I'll pass the buck on to strings compare to's method I'll say my name compared to the other cows name and that's simple I can control f5 now it builds runs no exceptions and let's do me cows dot for each cow lambda console right line cow dot name you see when I control F5 this and run that my cows are now in order. Abby, Bacon, Beef, Betsy, Doug, and Georgie. So when I call sort with no arguments, my data types must implement iComparable. And then list sort method will use this iComparable interface calling compare to for each cow. In fact, let's actually watch that happen. I'm going to put a breakpoint here. F10, let's make our list of cows. F10 on sort, you can see that the first comparison it says, K, Georgie is being compared to Betsy. F5, now Abby is being compared to Georgie. F5, now Abby is being compared to Betsy, so on and so forth. And list sort method will call this compare to as much as possible or as much as necessary in order to be able to order the items appropriately. Going back to this sort here, however, I can call sort with no arguments. I can hit the down arrow, or I could pass a comparison. I'm actually going to skip over comparison for now, and I want to look at I comparer. And you may think, Jamie, we just looked at I compare, didn't we? No, we did not look at I compare. We looked at I comparable. When a type implements I comparable, it's stating that it knows how to compare itself to another instance of another type. An I comparer, however, is an external object that determines comparison externally to the cow and we'll examine I compare in the next video.